so Monique went on her uh, boycott of Netflix. Mm-hmm. Lots of people had a lot of uh, you know interesting things to say, but the Monique challenge that you did with Telemundo <laughs> and the language bias was one of the funniest things that I had seen yeah. this year. Right. Hands down. Hello, my loves. I would like all of you to join me on Boycott and Telemundo. Recently, I pitched a comedy special, and they said no due to racial, gender, and language bias. They said they're a Spanish-speaking network, and I don't speak Spanish, so they wouldn't give me a special. They've given Gabriel Iglesias a special, I think. George Lopez, I've never heard him speak Spanish, like a few words, but it just goes to show the discrimination that's happening at Telemundo. Now, granted, I don't know Spanish, but I want to be a trailblazer. Plus, I had the beginning and end of my special. Hola, hello, gracias, adios, thank you, good night. I just got to fill in the rest. I can learn Spanish, but the fact that they wouldn't even negotiate and give me a special lets me know that there is racial, gender, and language bias at Telemundo. So please join me in boycotting the Spanish-speaking network. Thank you. Gracias. I was bored. <laughs> I was in my hotel room. I was in Seattle, Washington. I was bored, and then I saw her. I said, hey, my loves, and did the racial and gender bias, and that's what comedians do. I was like this. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a funny one. And, you know, so there really wasn't much thought to it, but it, I thought it was funny. You said that they have a language bias because you don't speak Spanish. Right. I didn't get a special because <laughs> I don't speak Spanish. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, Monique said there was racial and gender bias. I said, there's a language bias in Telemundo. And then I said, they gave Gabriel Iglesias a special and George Lopez. I've never heard them speak Spanish. I've heard a few words. But <laughs> that's what we do. You see, you see somebody make a video and you make fun of it. Well, you know, I've talked about this, this whole situation. Uh, the Monique situation. The Monique situation. Personally, I feel it's, it's a little bit silly to to get mad that you're not getting the check that you want. Mm -hmm. You're not an employee of Netflix. You know, I mean, I I can imagine a discrimination situation where like, let's just say Monique is a vice president. There's another vice president. He's getting 10 times what she's getting and Mm -hmm. so forth. You know, these are all contract gigs that you guys do. You get a gig, you negotiate the price, the company wants to pay it. They don't want to pay it. You keep it moving. Keep moving. Uh, to sit there and start pocket watching what your uh, co-workers are getting. Yeah. Not even your co-workers, but your just fellow comedians are getting. And to put that on blast and to start comparing yourself to Amy Schumer and Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock and so forth. I just thought it was a little bit silly. Yeah, I mean, we're in a day and age where uh, you don't have to rely on on Netflix or Showtime or HBO or uh, Comedy Central anymore. You're in an age where you can do it yourself yeah. and release it digitally yeah. and put your clips on. I always think of YouTube as a as a TV station now. Like, it's a network. Yeah. And you can see people are getting television deals off their social media and off their YouTube. So, I mean, I, like I said, I go to Netflix every year. And I've never gotten a yes yet. I've gotten various reasons. I've gotten, we're going to do it. We're going to see what happens. But I haven't gotten a, a firm offer. So do I get mad? Nah. I just, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep being funny. I'm going to keep coming back. And one day, maybe. If not, I just, my last three specials I did myself because I didn't, there wasn't any networks that wanted to do it. And I shot it myself. And then I, I've been lucky enough. I got a good enough relationship with Showtime now that they're just like, just bring it in, you know? And then we negotiate a price, what they want to buy it for. But I know they, I'm, the good thing about Showtime right now is I know they want it. Whatever I shoot, it's just a matter of, do I get the, of course, you never get the money you want. It's part of negotiating. So how much does it cost to shoot your own comedy special, roughly? Is it 50? It can, it can vary. Like um, uh, one I shot, one I shot cost 200000 Okay. Um, but that, you got to realize that was, um, that was called I Agree With Myself. And that one we shot in Atlanta Civic Center. So I had to run out the Civic Center. I had to promote it. 
Um, I got, I still to this day, I'm the proud owner of a 15 foot G and a 15 foot O <laughs> because I had Geo in the background and we pulled it. And, you're, and you, I got to hire a director. I mean, the director, I'm paying him to basically shoot a movie, basically. So all that cost. So, and it was around 200,000. But you realize I got the door. So people paid, I had mm -hmm. what, three, 4,000, I don't remember, I think 3,500. We had around 3,000 tickets sold for that, let's say. So that money got recouped that night. And then we ended up selling it to Showtime. So I got money back there. And then we got a distribution deal. And now it's on Hulu. So you can watch it now on Hulu. So it ended up, I made my money back and then some, but it just took a while. You know, it, it wasn't like I got it back initially. And, and it's, not a, it's not about getting the money off the special to me. It's about staying relevant. And then I make the money on the road. That's where you make the money. And that's what, when I'm, you're listening to Monique talk about the 500,000, I'm like, but the 500,000 that you got paid for that, there was another, th what, 300,000 they were gonna invest in production. And you're back out there. If, if you get a special that, that hits, you know, you, you make all your money on the road. Well, yeah, I mean, when you talk about YouTube being like television, you know, Vlad TV these days, at the time of taping now, we get about one and a half million video views a day. That's why I'm doing it. There's a reason I'm, I'm sitting here doing this interview. Right, per, per day. You know, last time the interview we did together probably got about a million views put mm -hmm. together. And uh, I try to explain to people, like for example, if you have a thousand videos on YouTube and they're making 10 cents a day, mm -hmm. which is not that hard to do, you'll make $36,000 a year just residual income. Right. Just having the videos just sit there. Now, if each of those videos makes a dollar a day, that could turn into, you know, three hundred and sixty thousand mm -hmm. dollars per year. You see what I'm saying? And and you own your own content. You could monetize it forever. Mm -hmm. And you, th this is the whole mentality of like, fuck all these upfront checks. Like we've never done any deals with Netflix. Not to say they're banging down our doors, but when we saw the way it was structured, it was like, you get this check and that's it. Right. <laughs> you have no ownership. They own it for like 10 years. You can't put it on any other digital platform. That's but it. At, as a stand-up, though, yeah. I don't want to be telling those jokes in a year or two from now. So I'm like this. I want to get them out there. Like I did, I did Def Jam this year. And I didn't do Def Jam for the money or wanted... I, it was kind of like spur of the moment type deal. And... I had five minutes I wanted to burn. I had, I had like a Trump bit. I had a bit on Bill Maher when he said the N-word on the show. I go, I don't want to be telling that joke a year or two from now. That joke is now. And I, I was like, okay, I got a way to get it out there now. So a lot of times I'll, I'll, I've always shot my own specials because I'm like, I want to get this material out there while it's still relevant. You know? Right. So who's ever taken it, just throw it out there and go on to the next one. Right. Yeah. I and feel that, you. And that, w w with Netflix, you know, I mean, I would have taken the deal. And yeah. been like, okay, let, let me prove my numbers. Let me, uh, let me show you it's funny. And I have a fan base that'll go see, get to watch it. And then you go back and you shoot another one. Well, I interviewed uh, TK Kirkland. You know, you're talking about you might have a deal with them or with Amazon. Right. What did you think about the whole Monique thing? About the whole Netflix boycott? Well, here's the thing. The boycott was wrong. I don't think, in, I think in business you keep some things low key and you negotiate your deal. As a comedian, one can never tell another comic what they're worth. Like, I think that's totally wrong. You know what you're entitled to, you know what you feel. Where it became a problem with me is that when you took it to the street and you made it personal, I always believe never allow your emotions to fuck up your money. Never. So whatever you gotta do to stay calm, flip the deal, or go to another carrier, like. It's possible I might be going somewhere else that you take your same thing and you go somewhere else, but you never make it personal to the point that one, you embarrass your colleagues, you become a mockery of all the comedians to make fun of you, and it, it, you make boss moves. You stay low key, you get the money, and I can tell you this right now, my deal is more than 500000 but if I had $80 million and they still offer me $500,000, i am taking motherfucking 500000 because I know what I could do with $500,000. Um, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I could see that. 
But she's not, the thing about it, she's not going to, she's so far dug in now. And she's drawn that line in the sand. Right. That it's almost like she's too far gone to say I, I, I was wrong in this instance or this instance. I was never in her business about Netflix or anything. When I did the video, it was more what she said about Will Packer. Whew. Man, Monique don't stop. She blames everybody. It's Oprah, it's Tyler, it's Lee Daniels, it's Netflix. Now it's Will Packer. She went too far when she started blaming Will Packer on shit. That's my friend. That's my homeboy. Will Packer's done more for black actors and actresses than just about anybody in the last 10 years. I mean, he is basically showing Hollywood that black movies have a mainstream market. I mean, Takers, Think Like a Man, Ride Along, Stomp the Yard, Girl Strip. I mean, the dude is basically changing the game, and now you're going to say he's against you. When, honestly, he put you in a movie almost Christmas when nobody was putting you in movies. And he stuck his neck out, and he went to bat for you. And now you're throwing him under the bus. I'm not going to sit back and let you slander my friend's name like that. Will Packer is a good, good person. That's a good brother, man. He helped change my life. So I ain't going to sit back and let you slander his name, Monique. Sometimes you got to take accountability for yourself. It's you. It's you. What can you do to change things? Stop blaming everybody else for your shit, man. Come on, Monique. Shit's getting old. And I didn't think it was going to take off. I was like, Instagram, you know, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I mean, I was serious, but even then I was like this. I'm never serious. <laughs> so, so I literally had to put on a game face like, you know, I'm mad. And then I got done, I go, man, I look freaking really mad in this. You seem kind of mad in it. Like actually, I pressed yeah. send and went, man. I told my wife, I go, look how mad I look. <laughs> my gangster? <laughs> right. I'm in the, as I'm in the carpool lane to pick up my daughter from private school. That's how gangster I was when I made gangster. that video. You know what I mean? Like I'm literally in the, and the cars are all backed up and just sitting there like. And I just thought, for me, I thought it was too much when Monique compared Will to like Harvey Weinstein and the slave taking the other slaves to the bottom of the ship. You never, and I was like, come on. You know, and I, and I think sometimes people, when a lot of people say, why couldn't Will speak for himself or why didn't other people speak up? I think a lot of people, they don't like to be bothered. You don't want drama, I get it. But I think at some, at some point, somebody has to be like, hey, you're wrong in this instance where nobody was really saying that. So I was just like, hey. And that was it. Like, as far as like Monique, I've always liked her. She's never done me wrong. She's always been real mm -hmm. cool when we met. I just thought she was wrong in this instance talking about Will Packer.